Uh, so in this tutorial, uh, we are going to solve some questions under sound, sound wave. So I've got a number of questions with me here. So the first question is, um, a stone is dropped from rest into a well. The sound of the splash is heard exactly two seconds later. Find the depth of the well if the air temperature is 10 degrees Celsius. Okay, so let's first uh, try to understand the question. So if we have a well, I'll just have a well here. Okay, and then the height of this well, I'll call it H. It's the one we're trying to find, which we don't know. And then they are saying that a stone is dropped. So if this is the stone, there is water here. Okay, so now, the time it takes to for this stone to reach here okay that is what we are going to call T1 I would note that one as T1 then again there is a time which it takes for this sound to travel from this level all the way to the top where the person is so this total time which is 2 seconds it was the time the addition of the time it took from this um, for this stone to reach down here and the same time at the same time the time it takes for the sound to travel from this point all the way to the top part so meaning we've got two times we've got T1 and T2 so T1 is the time it takes for the stone to reach on the bottom of the well that is T1 so if I add T1 plus T2 T2 is the time it takes for it to move from the bottom here all the way to down that is the sound now so when I add T1 plus T2, I'm supposed to get 2 seconds. And I do know that I want to find the H. So I started from rest, meaning the initial velocity is 0. So D is equal to V initial times T plus half GT squared. Since the initial velocity is 0, this is going to be cancelled out. So I have this D is the same as H. So I'll say H will be equal to half GT squared. Now, in this case, which T are we talking about? We are talking about T1. Okay? So, I'll say half uh, G T1 squared. Now, since I don't have H, I also don't have T1. I'll call this equation 1. Again, the speed of sound in this case, the velocity of the speed of sound, we do know that in the velocity is given by distance over time now in this case this distance is the h and my goal is to make this h as a subject of formula so i'll say d will be equal to v this is now the speed of sound in air so the speed of sound in air is going to be now t2 the time it the time it takes for the sound to travel from this part here all the way to go up that is t2 so i'll say times t2 like that Okay, so D is the same as H. So I would say like that. Okay, now I have got two formulas which I have to put them here. So I'll say my H will be equal to half GT1 squared. Another one is that H should be equal to V times T2. Now we can make T1 as a subject of formula or even just T2 to make things simple. Let's make T2 as a subject of formula in this formula. So at this point, I will discover to say the verse, the the H, this H and this H, they will be the same. Okay? So I need first to find T. So let's make T2 as a subject of formula. T2 will be equal to 2 minus T1. Meaning that where there is T2 in this formula, initially these two H, we are supposed to equate them equal to each other. What do I mean? I will say half gt1 squared will be equal to v times t2 so where there is t2 let's replace it with 2 minus t1 okay so i'll say half gt1 squared is equal to v open brackets where there is t2 we put 2 minus t1 now that we have got t1 both sides the left side and the right side but again we've been told that Find the depth of the well if the air temperature is 10 degrees. So I need to find the velocity when the air temperature was 10 degrees. 
and I know that V is equal to 331 times the square root of the temperature divided by 273. So this temperature we have to change it to Kelvin. So I'll say 273 plus the degrees which is 10. That would be now the temperature in Kelvin. So I'll say 273 plus 10 which is 283. So my V will be equal to 331 the square root of 283 divided by 273, like that. So 283 divided by 273, the answer I get is 1.0366. I get the square root is 1.018 times 331. I'm getting 337. So the velocity now which we are talking about right now is 337 meters per second. Okay? Now that I have my velocity, I can plug in the values to find first the time. Now when I find the time, I need to come back and use this. Why am I going to use this? I cannot use this because this stone was falling under the influence of gravity. So gravity has to be included. That's why I'm going to use the first one. Okay? So I've equated this distance equal to each other. And then I'm going to say half gt1 squared is equal to my v is 337 open brackets 2 minus the t1 I don't know so I can now plug in half since it was going down the g will be positive because it was going under the inf it was going toward the gravity so it will be 9.8 then t1 squared is equal to if I multiply these two I'll say 337 times 2 which is 6 which is 674 then minus 337 times t1 is 337 t1 so now I can get rid of this then I'll say half times 9.8 is 4.9 t1 squared is equal to 674 minus 337 T1. I can clearly see that I've got T1 and just T, meaning that is a quadratic equation. What's the best thing to do? I'm going to shift I'm going to shift this to, to go to the left hand side. Okay. So I'll have 4.9 T1 squared plus 337 T1 minus because this one when it goes this other side is going to be minus 674 is equal to 0. Now that I've got this equation here I can use quadratic equation to find the value of T. I no longer need this. Okay. Then I also no longer need this. Let me just push this part here to be on top here. So using quadratic equation is going to be t is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. So this is my m, this is my b, and this is my c. So t will be equal to uh, negative 337 plus or minus the square root of 337 squared minus for the value of a is 4.9 then c is negative 674 like that i divide this by 2 a is 4.9 like that so i have t to be equal to negative 337 plus or minus what is in the square root there if i do 337 squared negative and negative this negative here and that negative will be plus. So I'm, I'm going just to say plus. Then I'll say open brackets. 4 times 4.9. Again times 674. Then I close the brackets. So I'm getting um, 126,774.4. So now I get the square root of this. I'm getting 356. 356. 
zero six, which is the same as just point one. Then I divide this by two times four point nine is nine point eight. Now I'll create space here on top. So I'll have t will be equal to negative three thirty seven plus three fifty six point one. Divide this by nine point eight, or another value for t will be negative negative three thirty seven minus three fifty six point one divided by nine point eight. Okay, so what would be the value for t? I'll just do it direct. So it will be negative three thirty seven plus three fifty six point one. I'm getting 19.1. 19.1 divided by 9.8. So I'm getting T1 will be equal to, now this is T1 which we're finding, 1.94. Okay? 1 1.94. 1.94. 1.94. Or I can just round it off and say 1.95 seconds. This one will give me negative, but time cannot be negative, so I'll just leave it that side. It's going to be negative 337 minus 356.1 divided by 9.8. So I'm getting negative 70.72 seconds. So the time, which is T1, is now 1.95. Now, since I have the formula which I can use to find the height, now that I have my T1, I said we are going to use the one which is having G because it was in a free form motion, so it was falling under the influence of gravity. So it will be half G T1 squared. So half 9.8, then T is 1.95. Now I square it like that. So my height of the well is going to be 0 0.5 is 1, 1 over uh, 2 times 9.8 times 1.95 1.95 I square it so I'm getting my answer to be 18.6 let me redo it I'm saying we have 1.95 I square it times 9.8 times 1 over 2 is 0 0.5 so I'm getting 18.63 meters so this is the height of the the building so now <clears throat> So this is the answer for this question. So you have first to for these two seconds, it was the total time t1 plus t2. That is the key point which you have to take note there. Okay. Then you have to find t1 because we have to use this formula where there is g. Because the the stone was falling under the influence of gravity. So that is it for the first question.